In this video, I want to show you the setup that I'm using to tutor my students online currently and give you some tips and hints so that you can tutor students online as well. Some people have been asking me recently about you know, the, the tools that I use, so I want to show you the tools and the techniques and the software so that you can get set up to tutor your students as well. So the first thing is you, know, you want to have a, like a laptop or a desktop or um, you know, even like a tablet so that you're going to need that. And then also um, you're going to want to have, if you're doing math tutoring like I do, some type of a writing tablet. And this writing tablet um, connects to my computer with like a USB connection. And I'll put links in the description below if you're interested in any of these uh, tools. And then I recently got this, um, what's called a document camera. And this is kind of neat because if you're working on like a, a book or a worksheet, it gives you basically like, like a top-down view so that students can see exactly what you know, you're looking at without having to like take it and hold it up to the, you know, to the uh, camera on your computer, et cetera. That's a little bit shaky and a little bit unclear. So this is a real nice uh, tool. I'll have, again, a link in the description for this one as well. And then optional, you can use the um, uh, audio on your computer, or what I like to do is I like to use the, um, like the headphones. And the headphones is kind of nice because you can kind of block out some of the, um, uh, background noise and you get a little bit better um, volume and, and, and clarity coming through to your student. So now what I like to do is talk about the software that I use and kind of show you how this all fits together. Okay, so when you open up Zoom, you'll see a screen something like this where um, at the bottom you've got all these different options where you can you know, mute, stop the video or start the video and you can invite a you know, student to the Zoom meeting or you can do that um, prior to, to opening up the uh, the Zoom uh, meeting, you can send them a link. And then you, this feature is what I really want to focus on here, this share screen feature. So at the bottom here, if you press share screen, you're given all these different options. You can use a whiteboard. So for example, let's open that one first. And here what you have is, you know, this large whiteboard. Let's make this a little bit bigger. And what you'll see is you'll see in the upper right hand corner, you'll see your uh, image here. And you'll also see below your student's image. And what you can do then is you can go ahead and draw on this whiteboard whatever problems you're solving. So for example, if I had an equation like 5x minus 2 equals 10, you know, you could solve it. Your student could, you know, then pick maybe a different uh, color to work with and they could say, all right, the first step is I'm going to add a 2 to both sides of this equation, you know, and you can work through the problems together. So you'll both be able to see uh, what you're writing on that screen as well as see each other's image over here. Now the other thing I'd like to show you, and this is using um, that document scanner that I was showing you a minute ago, is let's click new share and it comes with this um, free software, it's this visualizer software and what it basically does for you is it gives you um, just some options like for example here's like a, a math book you could zoom in on a particular problem like say for example I wanted to zoom in a little bit here and Okay, say for example, we were looking at like number five, we could say, all right, let's see if we can um, annotate or write on this one now. Let's go ahead to draw and let's say we, we say, okay, let's try number five, right? So let's go ahead and select a different color. And over here on the side, I'm just gonna say, all right, let's write the equation. We've got 11W minus nine minus seven W uh, equals 15. And then you could say to your student, okay, what's the, what's the first step here? What would you do? And again, they could go ahead and maybe pick a different color and, you know, they could annotate right on here and say, okay, the first step is I want to, you know, solve, you know, by combining like terms. So 11W minus 7W, okay, that's going to be 4W, you know, and they can work with the problem uh, through together with you. Now, sometimes students, they don't have like a, a tablet or a writing device. They could try to use their mouse. Sometimes it's really messy. Uh, but sometimes what they can do is just use a feature like, for example, um, like this spotlight key here. Okay, so for example, if we have this arrow, so your student might say, okay, you know, uh, see this 11W, see this 7W, we're going to combine those two together. So they could, you know, use a pointer basically like that to kind of help, you know, uh, be involved and indicate, you know, what the next step is and work through it together with you. So that's another option. Uh, of course, we've got the eraser feature here if we make a mistake. Or you could just clear the whole screen and start over. Um, and again, so that's just a, another feature um, that you can use, uh, the visualizer software, or if you don't have that, just go ahead and use the whiteboard. So then when you're ready, you could say, all right, let me say stop share. And 
now you're back to this home screen here where you can see each other. So the only other issue with online tutoring is, you know, how do you um, get paid for your tutoring? Well, you know, if you know the people really well, maybe it's somebody that you've worked with before, you could use something like Venmo, uh, which I often do. But if it's somebody that you haven't worked with before, I would recommend using something like PayPal, and you can send them an invoice through PayPal to their email address, and then they can pay you that way. So there is a small charge for that, but it's well worth it. It's more secure, unlike Venmo, where sometimes people can reverse the charges. So I would only use that if it was somebody that you really knew well and were uh, comfortable with. So that wraps up this video. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Otherwise, I've got links in the description to all the different tools that I mentioned, and I look forward to helping you in the future videos. I'll talk to you soon.